I'd like to uh, do something um, based on the many emails I've been getting. And some have been rather the kind of questions that are very hard to answer. So what I'd like to do is read you just a few of them and then explain how by knowing the changeless and how it works that everything is resolved and is clear as a result. Okay. Now here are some and um, when I read them, feel out, okay, feel out how does it pertain to the changeless. <clears throat> Dear Bert, I would greatly appreciate it if you could clarify something for me. Ever since childhood so many things have happened to me where I had no choice. Unlucky experiences. Are some people subject to unlucky draw of the cards? Are karmic consequences unavoidable? Are some people born lucky and others are not? Is life subject to chance? This is an interesting one and you'll find that no matter what question it is, it is answered the moment you move into that place of changeless now. Dear Bert, I've been watching your videos on the internet and they have helped me a lot to understand. I would appreciate it if you could clear something up for me. I've been married for 16 years to a good man I love and have two lovely girls. Something has happened that has me completely baffled and guilty. One day at a supermarket I met a man who was shopping also there and struck a conversation, innocently enough, about vegetables. We said goodbye, but found myself thinking about him and really didn't want to. The following week I met this man again at the same place, and he came over to me saying that he couldn't stop thinking about me also. I am confused and feel so guilty. Is there some explanation you can give me for this attraction that you felt? After all, she's happily married, right? So. Should I read one more or shall we go into some into some understanding of what is happening? Shall we? Yeah. Read 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 one more or Yeah. Okay. There's there's quite a few here. And there You wrote that I that I need do nothing but simply accept myself as I am. So I feel guilty because of being too self-concerned and generally because of escaping from my heart by doing things that don't correspond 100% with my heart. But strangely is that I find that I can do nothing about it, or can I? Tell me, can I just stop escaping or is the awareness of it enough? Okay, let's, let's stop there for a moment. Okay, one of the things that I have found and I can never talk about it enough, is to know the difference between thought and awareness. And until that has become extremely clear, we will always get confused, we'll always be uncertain. Um, first of all, briefly, thought is always changing. Thought is always seeking. Thought is always moving. It is the very nature of thought to act, to move, to seek to improve, to want to progress, to become. That is the nature of thought. Thought can never be still. It's not its nature because it appears as the world, it appears as, as the human form. It is constantly evolving. Many times when we have a child, you know, and the child experiences life, we, we really believe that this is his first entrance into life. We do not realize that the, that the child itself is the change, changes now. It never begun. It's the, the very nature of that child, the very spirit of the child is unborn. But of course we see the form and we do not realize the evolution that, has, that is taking place. So it's a constant motion. So the interesting thing about, and I'd like to illustrate it here, is that thought 
is in constant motion and it's moving like this okay first it starts this way okay evolving like a circle and this is the surface so it's the the, the crude form of experiencing and as the as it keeps moving it automatically begins to turn into itself and it spirals and spirals are you seeing this okay and it keeps on sorry <laughs> keeps on spiraling until it gets into a center the moment we get into that center we find the changeless but we will find that it is only through the changeless state that thought can happen and when we get into that state of being really okay we will understand everything that ever took place because of that, of that changeless. So let's put it another way. Everything that happens, all change that happens in life and all expressions and all experiences happen because there's a space called now in which it can happen. What is the utility of a pot? Why do you need a pot? To put things in it so that you can use and cook right you can put vegetables in and make soup okay but the utility of that pot itself it's not the outside it is the emptiness that makes it that gives it its utility the emptiness itself and similarly with us in order for us to to move to express to act to think to emote to experience needs a space in which it can happen but we never think about that space you see which is emptiness it is the space of now when we think about now people always think oh now I see so what is happening you see we think of what is happening no we're talking about that container in which it contains all the contents of which it, it is displayed the now never changes a million years from now it will be the same now that it is now because time doesn't exist can the mind understand that no because the mind is thought the mind is based on movement action evolution in other words but is evolution really taking place are things really happening or is it seeking itself all the time and discovering the changeless within it. Uh, how, how can I explain this? Because it, it has, words are very difficult. Um, see, one thing that action does, that the thought does, it always wants to be better, right? It doesn't matter what it is. If you're having fun now, you want to do it again even better. You know, if you look good, you still want to look even better <laughs> no matter what it is you want to be better you want to constantly become you want to achieve you want to attain that is the nature of thought because thought is always a becoming process but what is it trying to become you see that is its evolution and ultimately it's always seeking itself but since it doesn't know itself it is on the periphery so it seeks only physically. Oh, I want a house, I want a car, I want money, I want this and I want that, which is, which you can't help it. You are your evolution, that as far as being the thought is concerned. So you keep moving deeper and deeper. But as you acquire more things and you keep moving deeper and deeper into itself, because it's, it's a circle leading into the very center, you'll find that the crudeness and the coarseness of the outside seeking becomes finer and finer and finer. For example, when a person evolves, what is it that is evolving? In the beginning, there's the, the, even the conversation, even the expression is, is crude, it's coarse. It's, you know, maybe it's loud, it's, it's demanding, controlling. But as the person becomes, moves inward more and becomes aware of what is happening, that very awareness becomes a refinement. That is the evolution of the thought itself, you see? And in time, there comes the awareness of the thought. And as the awareness of the thought increases, it moves closer and closer to the center until it reaches that choiceless, unchanging essence. And that's called 
awakening. 